my name is Eric Andreessen, son of Pete Andreessen and grandson of Ruth Andreessen, who we're all here to celebrate. Uh, originally, we weren't planning on saying anything, but I think by popular demand, uh, people want to share their stories. That's why we're all here. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. I think uh, everyone that's here has a personal connection to Ruth, my grandmother, um, from so many different parts of the community, from preservation, education, uh, we have people from the Historical Society, from the Board of Education, we have government represented from many different levels, we have people who were friends from sewing, people that were friends from the arts, uh, it's really incredible and really fun to see people that uh, much of the time I grew up, but I'm getting a lot of, I haven't seen you in years, and I say, ah, yes, Neil, nor have I. <laughs> but uh, first of all, a toast to my grandmother, to this incredible community, and to everybody that came to honor her. We even got some music for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know that some of you here wanted to tell stories about my grandmother. Uh, so if you would like to stand up and just say one minute of how you knew her and, and a story from her, uh, we'll leave the microphone up here and you can come grab it. We'll be right by the red wine. It's a great pairing, so I've been told. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Pete. I'm the son of... Uh, and I almost, I think I know pretty much everybody here in one way or another. And everybody here has been part of a dynamic, multicultural, incredible community. There we go. Uh, and I want to thank you again, as my son said, thank you for being here. But one, one, the, Mom, there's so many stories about Mom. And uh, for example, the caregivers over there that we now know can lift 150 pounds. Um, and the people who came by and distributed medication and all of the people that were involved in her life. One of the stories is that Salvador Munoz used to come over when she was housebound from COVID and sing to her on her front lawn. And the other thing that was interesting was he asked her, what were the songs of your childhood? And if you know my mom, you know she had an incredibly multicultural and disrupted childhood. And so she told him, he went and looked up the songs and sang them on her front yard during COVID. So I'm gonna give the mic to Salvador here and see what happens. There might be an interpretive dance involved, I don't know. I took the liberty to write an anagram in the name of Ruth, describing her life and how I see her. Because we do in, uh, activities in the community for the Day of the Dead, but actually it's the Day of the Living, okay? And this is how we should describe her on a calavera or an anagram for her life. And it all begins with her name up and down saying, Ruth Anderson. Ruth, historical cultural matriarch, under your passion awakened desire to save historical places, heritage above all Salinas Valley. A hub of energy and drive, never accepted no for preservation. Doing the right thing for Salinas remembering the past and share it, embellishing and preserving for the future. Salinas founding celebration, the 150 foundation. Enacting the past in the present, dress up, do something related to the past. Never forget the past for future generations. Culture cures and embellishes our spirit. going to reenact the, her 101 birthday celebration that we did it on the lawn. 
And then she says, Salvador, come, sing. I want to hear it in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> so I sing it once. I sing it twice. I sing it three times. So I'm going to just sing one little stroke for that, only once. <laughs> Qué linda está la mañana en que vengo a saludarte. Venimos todos con gusto y placer a felicitarte. El día en que tú naciste nacieron todas las flores. La pila del bautismo cantaron los ruiseñores con placidez y flores. Hoy te vengo a saludar. Hoy por ser tu cumpleaños te venimos a cantar. make a second one which is we sing this during the day of the dead but we wish them to be alive in our hearts they are not dead in body but in our memories she's an anchor she's an inspiration so it's called a llorona because we cry we cry not of hurt or pain but we cry of joy because she's presence within us and it's called La Llorona. Ay de mí, Llorona, 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 tie, déjame al río, tapame con tu reposo, Llorona, que me muero de frío, tapame con tu reposo, Llorona, Porque me muero el frío, ay de mí, llorona, 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 de azul celeste. Aunque la muerte, aunque la vida me cueste, llorona, no dejaré de quererte. Y aunque la vida me cueste, llorona. Yo dos flores tengo en el alma, llorona, que no se apartan de mí. Dos besos tengo en el alma, llorona, que no se apartan de mí. El último de mi madre, llorona, y el primero que te di. El último de mi madre llorona y el primero que te di llorona. The last piece talked about two kisses that I have in my heart. The last one my mother gave me, and the first one my wife. Thank you. That was ready for more. Um, I'm going to pass the mic around a little bit here. The funny part about all this is that my mother didn't want a, a service. She didn't want a memorial. She didn't want a funeral of any kind. But we, the kids, have overruled her. So let's make the most of it. Greetings from the active seniors. Like many organizations that Ruth belonged to, one of them was the Active Seniors. And at 100 years old, she was in our ukulele club. Yes. Played the ukulele. And one of the songs that we always sang was This Land Is Your Land from Woody Guthrie. So well, you probably all know it. 
Well, Ruth decided that she wanted to change the lyrics. I can't sorry on key, so you'll have to bear with me. I would like to, to sing to you the song that Ruth wrote, her lyrics, for This Land Is Your Land. Are you ready? Yes. This land, did, this town is your town. This town is my town. Blue skies above us. Green fields around us. From the soccer fields to the baseball diamonds. This town was made for you and me. We love the rodeo and ocean breezes. Our flowers bloom, it seldom freezes. The winter rains make our rivers run. It dries again in the summer sun. I love Salinas, it is my hometown. No more I'll roam, -ber. I'll roam -ber. My roots are down. This town is your town. This town is my town. This town was made for everyone. This town was made for everyone. Ruth. Okay, Sam, you're up. I think he's going to tell the story about the time we put a rattlesnake in the freezer to cook it. And then she cooked it. She thought it was Swiss sausage. Is that the story? She probably well, thank you very much. Uh, Ruth was really a woman of all seasons, and just and then, you know, I think everybody here is she was your best friend, and that's you know, what can you more can you say about somebody? Um, she she was graduated from Stanford with a degree in geology, and somehow she and my dad were, got together, and I think he helped get her appointed to the state coastal commission, which he was on, and. They would travel all over the state together, and I would hear stories uh, that Ruth would tell. And about two, three, two weeks ago, I wanted. She just kept saying, "You got to come to the house. I have to tell you stories." So I went over there. I wish I'd had a tape recorder. And I sat there for about an hour and a half. She was so, so livid and so keen on remembering every factoid of history. It's just amazing. And then she asked the nurse, she said, you have to leave the room now. I want to tell Sam a story about his dad. <laughs> they did travel a lot of places together. But the one story, because it has to stay in Salinas, right? Um, they were at a Coastal Commission meeting um, in San Diego. And my father said, after the meeting, he says, let's go down to Tijuana and see Mexico. So she said, we got down there, and it really got late. And we decided, can we stay in Mexico? And uh, what will the staff think when they find out we're not there? And somehow my dad convinced her that maybe it'd be all right to stay in Mexico. And she said, and we had to sneak back, and we were like little kids worried that we might get caught. But what was interesting about that relationship is my father was in politics and he was a Democrat and Ruth was a Republican and he convinced her that she ought to be in charge of the Republicans for Farr. So she did that. And a great supporter of Fred Farr. And I get elected to Congress and who runs him against me? Her son, Pete. We have no idea which one she voted for. Wonderful woman, wonderful woman. Thank you, Pete. The mother of Harold referred to me as Sam Farr's punching bag. That will tell you how the election went. Anyone else? Oh, Nancy, come on up, Nancy. Now, Nancy, you were superintendent of Monterey County Schools. Oh, I was. I was. When I worked, I've known, uh, I've known Ruth since 1992, and from the first day I came to the County Office of Education and entered into the room, I was approached by this incredible, vibrant spirit, this incredible person with a passion for life and joy, an incredible wit and sense of humor, and I'll tell you, every conversation with Ruth was an experience that you'll never forget. 
she was so full of life and so full of joy about any topic you would give her. You present any topic, and a conversation with Ruth was a lifetime experience of just wanting to know more, her interest and her enthusiasm for whatever it was. We went to the, uh, I took her to the Monterey County Science Fair, and oh my goodness, that was hours, hours long, because we went to every single project, and at every project, Ruth was just enthralled with the work the kids did, and then she went deeper and deeper into the topic, and she knew about it. Then we'd move to the next project. It was a completely different aspect of science, and there was Ruth delving into it, and I was just following with her, listening and learning. Just an incredible spirit that she had. And I was with her just a, a week before she passed away, and uh, we're talking about, she's giving me advice about my house, about my garden and the soil and uh, what I should do and about taking me into her sunroom and seeing what I might want to put onto my house, having been there. And then we started talking about geology and my nephew, who she knew the time that he was a little boy and he was um, at my oath of office ceremony at the beginning and he's now growing up, he's studying geology. Well, we had to FaceTime him <laughs> and Danny gets on. Uh, the FaceTime with Ruth and he's listening to her and just watching his face as she spoke about her passion and love for geology and science and encouraging him. And uh, after we finished, you know, uh, that evening I get a text message from my nephew, the most beautiful text message which I sent to the family where he responded to his experience saying how, what an inspiration she was. A week before she passed, she was on to the next realm of life. She was giving advice and she was um, giving inspiration to him. And he even said that anyone studying geology should have an opportunity to talk to her. And he said that and every human being should as well. And there was just this incredible beauty about the way in which to the very last moment of her last breaths, she was still so full of life and energy and full of the, and the wit and the humor was the other thing, that in the midst of these deep conversations that you'd have with Ruth, there was always the spirit of humor and wit that would come through, that would just leave you thinking. And when I received that text message from my nephew, I thought, look at this, a young man, you know, in college, who took the time that night to still be thinking about the words that Ruth gave him just days before she passed on. So I know her spirit is alive and living uh, because that vibrancy that, that Ruth uh, has is something that just is a gift to the world. She was extraordinary in, in every regard and uh, deeply beloved. She always lifted up my heart and my soul and my spirit. And I think anyone who had the opportunity to be with Ruth knew that incredible blessing in life. So I just want to thank the family. What a wonderful family that she had. She loved them all very dearly. I knew about all of you, and I didn't know about the latest, uh, the partner, though, for Eric. That was a new person. I'm so glad that Ruth got to meet you, too. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, Steve, you're up. Is this when we get the interpretive dance? <laughs> no interpretive dance. Ruth Andresen was a force. I took calls from her on every aspect of Salinas local government, and I was talked into a few things, including chairing Founders Day, our 150th celebration of our city, getting our historical resources board established. She had so many great things to say about our community, and as I dug deeper, those stories got richer and exciting. She brought her life's experience to Salinas, a worldly view that was filled with travel all around the globe. If she saw something neat, if she read something out of the ordinary, she brought it to the attention of people that could make something happen because of it. I kept a file called the Ruth file. It, it was just filled with all of these bizarre ideas that she may have picked up in Sunset Magazine, read about in a newspaper from the other side of the country, or just thought up in the middle of the night. She set an example as a citizen because she was so involved in her community. The 50 years on our school board, oh, and by the way, she was the first woman. She could handle a sidearm, she could dress out a deer, 
and she could dress down about anybody if they needed it. And because I'm now running the chamber, here she is, member of the month back in 1974. Just incredible. You know, I think we salute her, but more importantly, as tempting as it's gonna be tonight to lay on the couch, to just roll over for another day, let's get out and do something. Let's go out and make a difference. Let's preserve our history, inspire somebody young, and hang out with somebody very creative. There's a lot of creative people here. I've never seen a better collection of colorful folks than there are here today, and Ruth did that. So let's lift our glasses to Ruth Andresen and say, thank you, we love you, we celebrate you. Thank you, Steve. This is Martin Vonnegut. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I uh, served with Ruth on the Monterey County Board of Education years ago in the 70s, and she was a tremendous person. And uh, I had lunch with her about six months ago, and I didn't realize at the time how important she was in World War II and what she did. She worked for the Army, and she did uh, survey work in Normandy, and uh, that's where my uncle was. And uh, so we had a, we had a lot of uh, experience together with that. And it was very important that uh, I think that uh, uh, for historical records here in Salina, somebody ought to introduce Ruth with regard to what she did during World War II. Because she, uh, she went to Stanford, and uh, uh, she told me she was the only boy in her class. Was all, no, she, she's the only woman in her class. The rest of her boys in that class. And there were 13 or someone in the class. And I think somebody ought to uh, interview her as far as finding out uh, uh, historical things about Salinas. And, uh, you know, it's good to be here to see some of the people who I remember from years ago that, uh, uh, that Ruth knew. And anyway, uh, thank you, and I appreciate the family uh, having something like this. And thank you, and thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody, every single person here has a story. Like Steve Doolittle right here. Who went to high school with me, graduated in 1972. Uh, 1974, that was. Yeah, but I went to, to high school with Ruth's kids. Peter and Lauren and Karen, and I knew them in high school. I never really knew her. Went to a couple of parties at her house. Uh, there was one where a buddy of mine, uh, Steve Coyle, I don't know, some of you might know Stevie Coyle. Anyway, something was going on, and there was a ping pong table outside, and he came running through the house and crashed into a big sliding glass door. And that thing shattered. He turned around and fell on the ping pong table. He was okay. Everything is fine. But it was quite a shock. It made a big noise. Never heard of a sliding glass door shatter like that before. Anyway, as far as Ruth goes, um, my wife Paula and I were her neighbor. We lived catty corner, uh, kind of across the back side. And uh, we used to see her coming, walking around with her friend Greg and his little dogs. And right by my mailbox, there was kind of a ledge, and so frequently she would sit there, take a rest, and we'd always keep an eye out for her, you know, and see if she was coming around and go out there and talk to her. And it was just wonderful to uh, experience some time with her just out there by the mailbox. And I remember one day she came out front of the house and she was looking down at our succulents. And so I went outside, I said, hey, what are you doing? She said, I don't have any of those. I might like some of those. I'm like, right on. So we picked some up, gave them to her. She took them home, and then every time she'd come by, she'd say, your succulents are doing great in my garden. So anyway, we really enjoyed spending time with her in her later years. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. I forgot that you're a young child. Class of 72 here, class of 74 there. Like I said, everybody here's got a story from Mom, or with Mom. 
I'm Deneen Gus, County Superintendent of Schools. Had the great opportunity to, to be Nancy's deputy for many, many years before she retired. And I just want to share a quick story with Ruth. So, as you know, uh, students take field trip to the first mayor's house. So, years ago, I go into the first mayor's house on a field trip and Ruth is there spinning, right? All the spinners. And she looks at me and she says, Deneen, Deneen, I just want to tell you, I know you're going to be the new county superintendent because Dr. Katowski is retiring. I want to make sure that you get all of the kids from the schools here. Like, figure out a way to get all of the students here on a field trip. And I said, oh my gosh, Ruth, I'll try. I, I'll try my best. I won't let you down. And then shortly after that, um, COVID hit and everything, the world changed, right? So I'm just really, really pleased to say prior to us even knowing that uh, Ruth was only had a, a few days left, prior to that, we had already arranged a field trip for all of the count for the district superintendents throughout the county to come and do that field trip that Ruth wanted them to make so, so badly. So this Thursday, county superintendents meeting, they will be taking a field trip. They'll be going to the first mayor's house, the train museum, the new welcome center. And I know that that is what Ruth wanted so badly in hopes that then, right, if all the leaders can see these amazing places, that they, they will ensure that their students get to come and visit. And so I'm so sorry I didn't get the opportunity to tell Ruth that we were making this happen, but this coming Thursday, it's going to happen, and it's all in honor of Ruth and her desire to get our kids to these historical places. So we're so thankful for Ruth and right what she did. Thank you, Ruth. You want to talk about Mom's last, our last conversation? Anybody? No? No. <laughs> okay. Eric, you're up. Okay. When we published uh, my grandma's obituary, we also left my email address for people that wanted to share their stories and couldn't be here. So this morning there was uh, Ron Wormser, who was a good friend, and he was, wanted to be here but woke up this morning sick. Uh, he wrote me a note and asked me to read it out and wrote me a beautiful essay. So this is from Ron Wormser. He says, It was my privilege to meet Ruth when, out of the blue, she called one day about ten years ago, wanting to know if I might consider helping her with a project for the first mayor's house, where she was a board member. I was still relatively new to the area, having retired and moved here with my wife in 2007 from Philadelphia after a 40-year career in nonprofits. Ruth had learned of me from an article in a newspaper about a recently published book I'd author about fundraising for nonprofits. As she later explained, she had seen something in my picture that accompanied the article that led her to think I could be helpful. Yep, that struck me as a little scary as well. <laughs> well, we talked. One thing led to another, and not only did we end up working together at the first mayor's house, but engaged with each other as friends and colleagues until her passing. The Ruth I came to know was first and foremost an educator, convinced to the depth of her intellect and soul and the importance and power of education, of a good, solid education from the get-go. She was equally committed to doing anything and everything in her considerable capabilities to make sure education both necessary and available to as many as possible within her orbit, regardless of age, origin, or capabilities. If she knew you, you were her student, and she was intent on furthering your education. Not a conversation or meeting went by without a suggestion or firm nudge of a book, documentary, or some other resource to expand my horizons. This, of course, reflected Ruth's own insatiable interest and curiosity about knowledge for knowledge's sake, and for the world around her and beyond. How many centenarians do you know who are active members of not one, but two book clubs and still voracious readers? Among the many lessons I learned from Ruth's remarkable life, which included a record of public and community service which is breathtaking in its breadth and in its length, was her gift for aging gracefully and with humor. As the years ticked by and the aging process took its toll, and while I wasn't there during the private time, at least in our hours together, her grace and invariable good humor always prevailed. Her only recognition of the ailments, discomforts, 
failings and indignities was to make light of them and most often joke about them. To the end, Ruth remained an educator, the teacher. She always was, showing the rest of us and leading by example an exemplary life of service and dedication. It's my privilege and honor to say Ruth was not only my friend, but more my teacher. From Ron Wormser. Here you have a second. Here you go. Hi, Pete. Hi, good seeing you again. Good to see you again. Been a while. <laughs> no, he's scared. See that? He's scared. He's worried that I have too many stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, I don't want to make this overly long. Um, I am, my former capacity was I'm a professional archaeologist. And I have served this community for, well, we won't go into that. Um, but now I'm currently on the board of the Monterey County Historic Society, and that is certainly a major focus for um, Ruth and as well as myself. And um, my deceased spouse is Gary Bruschini, so uh, technically um, my title is uh, Trudy Haversat Bruschini, although I never changed my name, so it's Trudy Haversat. And I so want to tell you, you know, it's like Ruth was so dynamic, and we all know that, but she's a major point to tell you that it's not how old you are chronologically, it's how old you think you are. And our culture tells us that you're old, to sit down, shut up. Don't drive anymore. You're too old. You're too old. And yet, from Ruth's perspective, I'm sitting at a table with a bunch of youngsters. I mean, you're young enough to be her kids. And yet, you're running around thinking, you got gray hair now, you're old. You know, you're not old unless you think you are. And she would want you to know that. And then, I will kind of go off to a, a funny story, well, not totally funny story, but you remember back in 94, we had this little flood, actually it's my, 95, I, I was a busy year, um, I had people dying, we had the flood, you know, it's like, and I came back from a death in Los Angeles just in time for being flooded out of my house in Salinas, and we wound up sitting in the back of our truck at the intersection of Davis Road and Blanco, and we appeared on the TV. We were on the news, because, you know, like the news is looking for those pictures. And so we were sitting forlornly on the back of our truck, wondering if the building the, that we lived in, which is that beautiful white Victorian that's on uh, Davis Road, and was going to be there in the morning. I mean, we were literally waiting for the sun to come up to see if it would still be there. And in those days, not everybody had a cell phone, but there were cell phones. So we had borrowed a cell phone to notify some of our friends who were going to a sh uh, uh, It was a, a, one of those things where you, you go and buy boats and whatever, fishing kind of shows. And tell them, please don't go to that show, pack up a generator and some hip boots and come uh, visit us. <laughs> and as we're sitting there and the light comes up and the TV cameras take pictures of us and they put it on the morning news, well, here comes knock on the side of our truck. Ruth saw us on TV. She recognized that intersection and she brought us a cup of hot coffee. So I still owe Ruth that cup of hot coffee. <laughs> but, you know, she was such a force to be reckoned with. She going like, well, yeah, you know, I just live in the neighborhood here. <laughs> so she made us coffee, and she walked out to give us coffee. And uh, I, I just, uh, you know, there's so many stories like that. She was just an incredible person and a force. And she'd also probably want you to know that you're sitting on where 
basically Selena started. I mean, any of you here that don't know that, Selena started at the bend in the river, and we had the, what basically was called the halfway house, is because it was halfway between and halfway between. And there used to be races to see the wagons coming that would stop at the halfway house. Well then, next to the halfway house, a little wooden structure was built that was the first hotel. And then the next generation, that hotel, which was wood, was kind of slipped to the back, and another building stood here, and that was called the Abbott House, and then that became the Caminos Hotel, and then the Caminos Hotel came down in the 89 earthquake, much to the distress of many of us. But behind us, thanks to the Taylors, we basically have the Phoenix rising here, and so this is a very appropriate place for somebody who so loved the history of Salinas to be celebrated. And with that, I leave you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to say one last round of thank yous. Uh, first and foremost to, to my family and obviously to Ruth's family. <laughs> I know my dad is just speaking has been at her house every day, bringing her food, helping her. Uh, Renee Guyton has been incredibly loving to my grandmother over the years. Um, Lauren Andresen in the Hawaiian shirt flew in from New Hampshire, dropped everything. She's visited my grandma for uh, weeks at a time over the past couple of years. And of course, my sister, Suzanne, she flew in from Norway just for this. Um, thank you so much for coming to support us. My partner, Catherine, right next to her, who has to deal with me coming home and complaining about everything after her at the end of the day. And uh, of course, we don't want to forget the caregivers who were with her 24-7 for the last year of her life. Uh, they probably knew her better than many of us uh, in the last couple of years, um, just helping her and really uh, listening to her, you know, I think we've heard so many stories. Uh, she was sharp uh, until the moment she died. It was really incredible. Um, I was having conversations with her about local politics uh, two days before. <laughs> uh, really special. So I want to thank Portobello's and Minardo here. They've done an incredible job hosting. And like Trudy said, it's amazing to see the old side of the Caminos Hotel and before that uh, and after that a parking lot. So it's really amazing to see what's happening on Main Street. I'm so excited and I hope when you all come down you think of Ruth and her work on the Historical Resources Board. And, um, last of all, I want to thank all of you because it wasn't just uh, you, her being a part of your life, but you were also a part of her life. Um, so little pieces of her will go on because of that. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you have any stories, please feel free to send them to me or come up and tell me. And um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>